set up. It's, okay, Carl, don't knock it down. I'm gonna film something, it's fine. Uh, okay. Today's date is, uh, is June 22nd. 2022 and it's officially been one day since I, Jacob Robert Briggs, have graduated from Lincoln Regional High School. Um, and uh, it's weird, you know. I am now a legal adult, done with high school, four years just done with. Uh, but to distract myself from uh, adulthood and all that and having to pay taxes eventually, which still don't know how to do, um, I decided to uh, take take on a film project as I've normally done whenever I didn't know what to do. Uh, so uh, today I put up a poll of three ideas that I had: uh, one town council skit, uh, a, uh, a Minecraft retrospective that I had written in November, and an idea that I just thought of very recently: a retrospective on Ringwood, the town that I grew up in, where I'm currently filming this with uh, with. Nice view of the outside, and uh, as you can probably tell by the title of this video, uh, the Ringwood Retrospective won. So, this piece right here is the first thing recorded. Uh, this was filmed before I made a script, uh, and before I even planned anything. Um, in this retrospective, hey Carl, um, I'm planning on filming on some locations. The restaurants, schools, um, different stores around town, uh, but also I'm planning on getting interviews from not only family but friends, uh, administrators at schools, just people of the town. And normally, in the documentary, you're trying to answer some type of question. You're uh, trying to build towards something, trying to kind of get this message out. But uh, I, I have. I have an idea of what I want this, what I want the end piece of this film to be, like what the, I want the message to be, but uh, I don't really have anything worked out, so like most things I've done throughout the school year, uh, I'm just going to kind of wing it. So uh, without further ado, this is the Ringwood Retrospective. <laughs> Ringwood is a borough in Bessay County, New Jersey, United States. As of the 2010 United States Census, the borough's population was 12,228, reflecting a decrease of 168 from the 12,396 counted in the 2000 Census, which had in turn declined by 227 from the 12,623 counted in the 1990 census. It is the home of Ringwood State Park, which contains New Jersey Botanical Gardens at Skylands plus Skylands Manor, the Shepherd Lake Recreation Area, 
in historic Ringwood Manor. I really just start off my documentary with a Wikipedia article. Yeah. Fuck it. Ringwood. Okay, and also just to be clear, those are prop cigarettes, okay? Prop cigarettes. I do not condone smoking, and I do not smoke, okay? It's cringe, it causes cancer. Probably should have switched those things around, but the point still stands, okay? And you could probably tell from my video, I don't even know how to smoke. I have to look up a YouTube video, which is very depressing. And also, uh, surprising that a result came up. That's, you know. Sorry, uh, I'm off topic. Where was I? Oh. Oh, yeah. Ringwood. For the last 18 years, this town has been what I call home. Um, and, you know, naturally, it being my home and all, I developed a sort of bias in the it, But not the bias you're thinking of, you see. Uh, in a place like New York City, or LA, or even Dallas, I would be able to talk about the many different aspects of it and have a variety of opinions. Um, however, uh, Ringwood is a bit different. To explain what this all means, I've interviewed a ton of people from Ringwood. Ringwoodians, and Woodies, and Windows, I don't really know the name of them all. Uh, people from Ringwood, that's what we'll call them. Uh, and ask them just one simple question. If you were to describe Ringwood in one word, what would it be? Ringwood is, you know, a town. Natural? I would have to say, cursed. Peaceful. Seductive. It's fine. Ringwood. I would describe Ringwood as spacious. Um, I'd say trees, because there's a lot of trees. Honestly, I would probably say lakey, because it's just full of lakes. Like, there's lakes pretty much every part of Ringwood. Do you have a Mexican restaurant? We do. Then not. Okay. You see, Ringwood is kind of weird for our It's like store brand bottled water. No one really has an opinion on it. It's just kind of there. So then, why am I making this? Why are there so many goddamn pizza places? Like, I'm all for healthy competition, but small town pizza places is a category I'm okay with having monopolized. Teddy Roosevelt be damned. Luigi's Pizza, Skyline Pizza, Ringwood Pizza, which, just to preface, is two minutes away from Skyline Pizza, Geppetto's Pizza Arena, Pizza One. And yes, I know Geppetto's is in Wanakew, but this retrospective is for Ringwood and the surrounding areas and the restaurants in them, such as, Tokyo Japan restaurant, where do I begin? Um, the original owners of this place, Super Chain, were some of the nicest people I've ever met in this town. Uh, they gave my family a ton of free appetizers and this really, really good like ginger pineapple slushy drink. It was incredible. Um, also, they uh, this this just passed two years ago, uh, when we went here for New Year's, they gave uh, me and my family a gift, these chopsticks here, and I've, I've had them ever since. Uh, I highly value them. It's just so great to have. Uh, but moving aside from just the people, the food here is incredible. I mean, yes, I only get one thing uh, because I have the appetite, I have the taste buds of a six year old. But, you know, chicken teriyaki, white rice, no vegetables. Mm, God damn, I, that's my final meal right there. Back into the boundaries of Ringwood, we have the Skyline Lamb Luncheonette, a uh, classic here at Ringwood. Um, it has high quality food, uh, it's efficient. Uh, really, it is a, a stable of Ringwood, which uh, kind of sounds like an insult, but I mean it as the highest compliment. 
Overall, the food in Ringwood is surprisingly varied for such a small town. Yes, the majority of restaurants are outside the boundaries of Ringwood, but still, it is a impressive cast that was able to complete. Going back to those interviews, let's hear about a couple people's favorites. What is your favorite restaurant slash local food place here in Ringwood and the surrounding area? Brooklyn Pizza. Mm. Not even the Ringwood. Look, man, I missed that pizza place. I was going through like I, I recorded a second before, like going through every like going to every pizza place. I missed that one. There's too many. How the hell did you not go to Brooklyn? That's there's like too many, dude. The good there's, place. There's so many oh, goddamn so, pizza places. So you places. have time to to ruin your taste buds at Geppetto's, but you don't have time. I didn't eat there. I just went outside, and thank God, no one was there when I recorded it illegally. I'd have to say Nene's because there's really not much else. There's like five diners and then Nene's, and that's about it. So I like it because it's not a diner. Mm. There's a lot to think of, you know. We got Quick Check, Quick Check, Back Alley, Parking Lot. I like the lunch in it, you know, by the CBS. It's very. Actually, I just went there today, actually. Believe really? it or not. I had, I had um, corn muffin pancakes. And they give you syrup and butter as well. It's like, it's, it's very good. I'm gonna give a big shout out to Ari from Skyline Pizza. If you want pizza in Ringwood, you go. Go to Ari. You tell him Antonio sent you. You'll love that pizza. Ari's the best. He's the man. Um, But there's a couple nice sit-down restaurants here in town. The Lakeside Diner is pretty good. The owner, Chris, very good guy. Um, we have a new restaurant coming in town, which I'm going to keep quiet about, but it's a really, really good spot that's going to be opening up. Um, but you know what? If you want like some Chinese food, Spring Chinese down in Stop and Shop, they're really good. I got to say, Lakeland School Lunch, kind of fire. Pomptonian, they do a great job. But food is food. Everyone's gonna say the food they've been eating for 18 years is good, or else they wouldn't be eating it. So let's move on to something a smidge more controversial, capitalism. Okay, so I'm recording this during a power outage. Uh, so I only have the light on my camera and my actual in the camera itself. So let's get this done. Um, the downside of living in a small town is that you tend to run out of stuff to do and you're not really able to engage in the American pastime of consumerism. Um, and because I'd rather not drive all across town because... Whatever it takes the fuck over Putin. I mean, look, normally I'm a big anti-cancer guy. But for him, I mean... I'm, I'm willing to go over the bridge. I'm willing to go against my beliefs. And I'm pro-cancer on this. Anyways, uh, so I'm just going to be talking about the Fieldstone uh, Park Shopping Center, uh, which I just learned the name of after going to it for about 18 years now. So, yeah. Then again, we have Dollar General. This place is a general store. Uh, before, a lot of people would venture out to Target and Walmart and have to go on the highway, or they would just go to a bunch of different stores to get what they needed. Um, is this place very convenient? Yes. Is it fairly priced most of the time? Did it cause America's epidemic of obesity? You're goddamn right. Look, you know Coke, right? The cola, not the powder. Well, you see in Dollar General, they sell a 16 ounce Coke can for $1, but the average price is between $1.50 to $2. You see, they're screwing with the economy, and I'm not okay with that. My yearbook quote was about how much I love the economy. So whatever you do, do not go into Dollar General and buy box worth of $1 16 ounce Coke cans. Uh, advertising. I have no idea what that is. I uh, That was just a crew member I got to hand me money to make the illusion that I was getting paid off by Dollar General. Uh, also, I didn't get a permit to film here. Uh, I may or may not have one. You know, that's a, 
that's something for the uh, the me in between scriptwriter me and currently filming this me. Yeah, I, that line's gonna be tough to say. Why am I still putting more lines in here? Why am I still writing lines? There, there shouldn't be more after this. Jake, what are you doing? Stop writing lines. Jake, stop writing more lines. This is gonna be a pain in the ass to memorize. Jake, what are you doing? Stop writing lines. Stop. Stop and shop. The main grocery store here in Ringwood. And what I mean by that is it's the only grocery store here in Ringwood. Um, you know, it's a pretty bare bone stop and shop, all things to be considered. Uh, but it has your essentials, base, uh, baked goods, produce, Chef Boyo D P Ferroni. Um, you know, I, I prefer ShopRite as a grocery store, uh, but I think that for the location of this, uh, it stands on pretty decent footing with it. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the Dunkin' here sells merch. Uh, that's about it. Drugs. I really should have not set off that segment like that. Okay, uh, so behind me is CVS, uh, which just so happens to be my most shop that's still here in Brentwood. Uh, not because I have an addiction to Flintstone gummies, but I don't have an addiction to Flintstone gummies. I don't. Uh, but because uh, they sell Ringwood merch, uh, which I just find really funny for Ringwood to have merch. That's just a funny thing. Uh, I have a t-shirt, windbreaker, I had one hat, now I have two hats because I bought one for recording that uh, earlier segment by the Ringwood Manor. Uh, but yeah, uh, in all seriousness, uh, this is CVS. You know CVS. Uh, pharmaceutical company. Uh, this is where most of Ringwood inhabitants get to pharmaceuticals. Uh, I don't know what pharmaceutical means, but I'm just going to keep using it over and over again. Um, and this actually is my most shop that store, uh, not because of uh, Flintstone Gummies or Ringwood Birch, uh, but because I live down that way on the other side of Skyline Drive, uh, which as a first time driver, you never want to cross Skyline Drive. So I went here for any time I wanted to get a snack or something. Uh, because once again, Skyline Drive sucks. And finally, Wells Fargo, one of the many banks here in Rimbo. Um Now actually, that I think about it, there's more banks here than all grocery stores. That, that's weird, right? That's that's Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. Besides that, uh, back to the point. Uh, this happens to be the bank that I'm a part of, uh, which means that at any given time, I can just walk in there and go into the riches room and take what I want. Uh, it's a great thing, but you know, for some reason uh, today they asked me to wait outside while they dealt with something. Uh, they went up to the phones. Uh, you know, I don't really know what for. I guess they have to call like a locksmith or something. I, I don't know. Okay, so apparently that was just robbery. Uh, I don't remember them teaching about that at all in video two, but it's good. Also, did you know that you have to pay your taxes? I, I thought that was just like a suggestion thing, like tipping. You know, like you could choose whether to do it or not. Uh, and I don't believe in tipping, don't believe in paying my taxes, but apparently the latter is a crime. Um, you know, I, I my personal finances class was all virtual. Um, you know, I guess when I go to the courts, I'll just tell them, uh, you know, it just it was just an honest mistake and you know, they'll let me off. You know, it's, it's not like the court to severely punish someone for a minor mistake and for something that's Nonviolent is a pretty laid back crime. The joke is that drug crime in the U.S. is severely overpunished. Uh, I mean, I don't, uh, I, I don't really have a strong opinion on it. Uh, I just thought it'd be funny to smoke a fake cigarette. You know what this reminds me of? It's like prison. And you know what else is like prison? School. So you most likely know that the American educational system is dog shit. And look, I agree. I, I hate College Board and the SATs and personal finances just as much as the next upright tax evading citizen. But I'm actually not going to bash on the schools here too much. Uh, they were forced to follow the system and a lot of the institutions actually cared deeply about those students and fostered a very positive environment. Except Theo Cooper, who sent me home on the bus, crying on my birthday because I forgot to get a permission slip this from my parents to say that I could stay after for Lego Club. And I sat, I was st I'm still mad about it, okay? I have not, will not, and will never forgive them for that, okay? And, and you know, I prayed every night to the shrine of possibilities for the downfall, but no, looks like I had to do it myself. So I, I became an adequate, in high school, I became
became a pretty good director and writer just so that I could make a documentary about Ringwood and call them out. But also, they did do a pretty good job with the movie nights in the gym. So, you know what? We're good now. We're, we even. You would, which I'm going to be honest, was kind of a blow to me. Uh, they have a cool playground and a hockey rink. Ryerson. Okay, got those four years ago. Uh, uh, what is it to say about Ryerson? Cool dance is weird. Waterball flipping got banned. Of course, Greg was bullying. I painted a ceiling tile with a Bob Ross painting. Uh, puke red liquid on the eighth grade trip. Um, and I bought a Hershey, uh, Hershey shot glass at Hershey Park. Uh, yeah. And finally, Lake, uh, which I'm actually here to bash on. Uh, for as much shit as I talked about this place, I generally could have not thanked it enough for what it's given me. Um, for the friends I've made, for the people and mentors I've, uh, I've met, uh, it's really been an incredible experience. Um, for the moments that were both ironically funny, such as the skyrocketing SAT scores, to the times I've cherished, and to the video projects I've done here, I truly cannot be more thankful. Um, I know I'm not known for being blatantly heartfelt and very sentimental and serious, uh, but I, I want to be here. Uh, I'm very thankful towards uh, my video teachers, my friends, have supported me throughout this whole year and it made me a better person, giving me a reason to be better, uh, better than who I was back in Ryerson. Um, most recently, during a screening, I had a, a video of the audience on its quickly become my most cherished video. Um, not solely because of the meaning behind the video, which I, I do greatly hold dear to me, but uh, for the brief frames in it, where I'm able just to see everyone in the audience smiling and laughing because I know then that all the hours I put into those projects that for brief moments I was able to help people forget about their worries and help brighten people's days and I'm truly thankful for that. Um, truly I'm, I'm thankful for a lot of stuff here and for as much as I bash on it uh, I had to give this place praise. Except for the food because god damn I seen you here what were they doing? Like, look look let me, let me go do a green screen real quick. Thank you, Jake, from the past, who was supposed to do this segment, but didn't have enough time and didn't have the willpower to just do it there, which, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. So, behind me are two pictures. One of them is of Lakeland food, and the other is of prison food. Can you tell me which is which? Spoiler alert, the both Lakeland food. Um, yeah. Uh, I would gladly pay $3.25 for a bland cold cut sandwich. Still, at least that was edible, okay? The, the most appetizing food we had all year was this. And like you might be saying, oh, like, yeah, it's not, it's not excellent, but that's pretty good, you know? It, it, has, it has all your core cool groups. It, it, it doesn't look too bad, right? Yeah, because it's prison food. I didn't murder a man. I, I, I didn't let a building on fire. I'm not an arsonist. Why, why am I gonna eat like one? Just because I don't pay my taxes, I gotta eat like this? No. That's not right. No, I, I I have a goal in life. To become super rich. Not not so that I can do like, you know, good good work for the environment and help charities and also just have a good living living style and lifestyle and stuff. No, no, I wanna buy possibilities. I wanna refurbish it. I wanna make it the best goddamn restaurant on earth, okay? Cause that would be very funny. Possibilities being like a Michelin star restaurant funny as hell. But also, I, I, no one should have to suffer during lunchtime like we did senior year. Wait, what the hell were we talking about? Uh, some about education. Uh, eh, well, I can't remember. It'll come to me eventually. Uh, so let's just move on to nature. This is probably the main reason people come to Ringwood. I mean, it's literally in the name of the town. Ring, referring to the rings of a tree that show its age, and wood, you know what it refers to. Um, and you might think as an artsy guy who's so fixated on talking about meaning and purpose that I'd be a fan of nature. Well, I'm also unathletic, and can't believe I'm gonna say this, a gamer. So me and nature have had some disagreements, you know, I think it's too hot outside. Nature sends 15 bees to sting me. I piss on a tree, we go about even. But on 
the other hand, yeah, it's really beautiful. Sometimes I think I've gone beauty blind from all the spectacular views and things I've seen here, but somehow it proves me wrong. You know, I'm really gonna miss this place. I am. And it's strange to say, because at Poughkeepsie, I'll have way more stuff. I'll have 10 times as many grocery stores and general stores and drug stores and a thousand times more things to do and a million more beautiful things to see, but I really am gonna miss Ringwood. You know, I don't know why. I don't know why Ringwood. I don't know what I'm even making this film about, this documentary, this stress reliever, this stress maker. What is the deal with the airline? No, nope, wait, wrong thing. No, wait, wrong thing. No, wait, that's the wrong thing. <sighs> Always a joke to snap back to reality. Well, well, the opposite. Snap back to it, more like snap away from it. Use a joke to cover up the sincerity and uh, kind of not have to face it right in the face, but uh, face right in the face, that's a weird saying. But. to do in a way that is some kind of joke. What metaphor, simile, allegory, etc. would you use to describe Ringwood? Ringwood is like a big pool because it has all these, as I said before, all these lakes. And basically, one lake is connected to another, so it's basically one big pool, because if you might be in one lake, you could end up in another lake, you never know. So it's like one huge pool. I mean, Ringwood, I always imagine it as kind of being a really, like, grumpy old man who specifically goes to, like, Italian restaurants and diners, but, like, he always tips, like, the lowest possible amount and he always has like a really specific like complaint about some minor issue. Well, Ringwood, it's like the world, you know? It's mostly filled with trees, right? Mm -hmm. Ringwood, is, Ringwood is like the world because everything's all over the place, mm -hmm. you know? Like I live on one side of Ringwood and my friends live on the other side. Mm -hmm. Just like if someone were to live on one side of the world and then another person's living on the other side, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's... It's a lot like the uh, the British Empire because it's the pe people speak English there and it's white. I'd say Ringwood is like if someone took a little bit of Pennsylvania and put it in New Jersey and had it blend with New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So you have a little bit of Pennsylvania and a little bit of New Jersey. Yeah, I don't know. Um, hmm. For Ringwood, well. How high are the Ringwood uh, crime rates right now? Ringwood, it's like carrot cake. I fucking despise carrot cake. You know, that, that's a good question. That is a good question. So, uh, I'm talking about Wanaku at this point. There's this, okay. there's this little restaurant you know, on, on this little road called Ringwood Avenue. It's called Nene's Cocina. It's a, it's a beautiful Mexican restaurant. And they have this wonderful sign like right outside of the restaurant has nothing on it. It's just a plain sign. And that's how they advertise for their business. It's just a plain sign. Nothing on it. And I think that reminds me a lot of Ringwood. Ringwood is like a seashell. When the snail finds the seashell, it's like any normal seashell. But like when it finds it, it's its special home. Thank you. Now, I don't specifically know who you are watching this. I mean, you're most likely a friend or an acquaintance of some sort, but thank you. Because I finally realized what I want the message of this film to be. I'm thankful for everyone that has lived in this town with me. Ringwood Place isn't meaningful enough to make a documentary about, but the people of Ringwood, 
to bring Woody into whatever the hell we call ourselves. That's what we have a documentary. Ringwood is a place of people, which no shit ever was a place of people. But Ringwood is a place of people. Okay, I don't think that helped, but look. Ringwood is a place of people going about life. Unlike New York City, where everything is a story and the American dream is front and center, Ringwood is human, both in the mundane way of life as well as in the empathetic sense. We are a town of people trying to get our shit together. We're not doing terrible, not perfect, but not terrible. Really, what this retrospective has been about is the humanity of a town like this. The imperfect nature of this place makes it really easy to shit on all the flaws, like the lack of stuff to do, or the slow pace at which things get done, or even all the goddamn potholes in the road. But isn't it those imperfections that show us what we have already perfected? Without those imperfections, how do we know when we have done something right? To an extent, I believe that has almost become a slogan of my life so far. I have many, many regrets from over the years. I wish I had been a better student. I wish I didn't try so hard to prove something so meaningless. I wish I had given love a shot during my high school years and not focused so much on filmmaking and schoolwork and maintaining the status quo. But all those things pale in comparison to the simple idea that I can say I'm proud of myself, that I believe I'm a good person. For a long while, I wasn't able to say that. I'm gonna be honest, I was kind of a prick back then, and I wasn't proud of who I was. And underneath that boy was a bit of who I am today, but it wouldn't have mattered, it shouldn't have mattered. If it wasn't for the people of Ringwood, my friends, teachers, mentors, the ability to make a film like this, the freedom to explore this passion, and the security to make a video where I basically confront my entire childhood and upbringing, none of it would be possible without the people of Ringwood. The most human people on earth, for better or for worse. That is what Ringwood is about at heart. The people. Holy shit. This documentary wasn't about the place of Ringwood or even the people of Ringwood. It's about my pet cat, Carl. I mean, I'm gonna miss this guy when I go up to college. That's why I made this whole documentary about my hometown. Not, not as a one final send off for me to do something with my friends or as a, uh, a final departure from this place. No, it's because I'm gonna miss this guy. Look at him. He's like a guy with a black Persian cat. I mean, He's like the big little dude, except instead of dude, it was guy. It was guy, it was like entity, not like uh, a, a, a cat, not like a human, because he's a, he's a cat. I mean, all that stuff I said about humanity and imperfections, those are just stupid observations. I mean, what, look at him. This is why I did it. This is the sole and only reason why I made that entire documentary. Oh, man. This bit is probably run its course, and now I can cut the credits.
Oh man, I'm so happy that I finally finished with the Ringwood Retrospective. Oh, it took forever, so much work. Oh, now I can finally take that off the list. Uh, I can I can call it a day. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I can go to Bermuda, uh, you know, get ready for college. And uh, my notes, uh, that's weird. What's the, what was the note before that? Council tax. Town council tax is a comedy skit about a guy trying to find more ways to tax a town so that he can, uh, so he can fight the sun god and and inspired uh, by Edgar Wright physical comedy that I'm I'm gonna try to make before I go off to college. But but I thought this was the final project. God fucking damn it. Eh, screw it. I'm working on the script on vacation.